with the holiday season in full swing, the real estate market usually goes to sleep right about this time of year. And that is once again the case, but maybe not in the way you think. So in today's video, I want to walk you through everything that happened in November here in Ocean City, as well as give you some indicators as to what to expect, not only in December, but in early 2024 as well. As always, we're going to start talking about what happened in the past, bring it to the future with a lot of visualization and graphs coming up, and then we're going to predict which is what most of you want to know. What? going to happen. And again, nobody knows for sure, but I have some pretty good uh, predictions here coming up. So mortgage rates are one of the big things that changed in buyer's favor for once. They dropped basically an entire full percent over the course of the month of November. We're seeing sub 7% rates at some points, at some price points with some buyers, but primarily you're going to be around 7%, um, plus or minus a little bit, depending on the day or the week. Uh, inventory came down 1%, which is normal for this time of year. And I know a lot of people are waiting for the inventory to come, right? No matter where you're getting your information and news from, uh, I believe that most media has caught up to the fact and is starting to really understand the whole lock-in effect, right? That inventory cannot come from nowhere. And if you're in a market like ours where you can't just build on raw land because it doesn't exist, you're going to be very constrained, supply constrained. And if the supply stays constrained and demand doesn't completely fall off a cliff, then things aren't going to change too much in either direction. And that's really where we are. So days on market continues to be stable and actually took a dip in both uh, categories of single families and condos in the month of November, which we'll see in a bit. And prices, again, these are year over year, 12 month rolling average prices. I try to smooth things out a little bit so that we don't see a ping pong ball going all, all over the place. 12% um, year-over-year growth, 12% appreciation is what we saw in the condo sector. Single families were down for the second month in a row, which is not surprising, right? We saw this coming. If you watched some of my past uh, videos, and if you haven't, definitely hit subscribe down below so that you don't miss one because all of these dots connect over time. And if you catch one of these in isolation, you can certainly still learn a whole lot. But if you are following along, while you're in the consideration process of buying a home or selling a home here in Ocean City, um, things are going to make a whole lot more sense. You're going to feel a whole lot more confident in what's going on in the market at large. So new listings is something I really want to spend some time on a little more than normal. So obviously things are trending down as they've always been um, since we started tracking this back in 2019. Now, if we look specifically from July of 2022 to November of 2022, Right, you're going to see we were basically around 75 new listings back in July of 2022. We came up, peaked just over 100, and then we came crashing all the way back down to about 60 um, new listings in November 2022. We have the exact same shape starting in July of 2023, going to November of 2023. And we actually ended at the same number of new listings as we had in November of 2022, as we saw this month in November 2023. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when we're starting to see these patterns and trends repeat themselves at length, um, despite the variables that everything um, that we've all been facing and everything has been up against, we can more confidently predict what's coming. So as we see here in December of 2022, we actually went just below 50 new listings in December. So I would expect that we will be right around that. And lo and behold, after one week, here we are on December 7th, pulled everything that has hit the market so far, um, run everything that I normally run. And we are on pace to see, drum roll please, 52 new listings. If everything tracks the way it did in the first week, if we see roughly the same over the next three weeks, we will be right around that 50 number yet again. So does that mean in January, we should expect a spike up to about 95 properties and then see that two months running? It's a possibility, right? We go back in history and that seems to be pretty much the case back in 2021, huge jump from December to January, and again in 2022, and again in 2023. So I think I could say with a reasonable degree of confidence, yes, the lock-in effect did not really exist the way it does now back in those years. So admittedly, I don't expect it to be quite as high, but it will certainly be an increase. Um, and I'm going to pull a number out of the air right now, and I'm going to predict that we see about 80 new listings come January. And hopefully I remember to double check that, call me out on it if I'm right or wrong, either way. Pending sale-wise, again, we're six months running where we've had more pending sales this month over the same month in 2022. So while things looked awful over the first quarter of 2023 in terms of the volume, the amount of homes that we're selling, 
we are on pace to see just a 9% reduction in overall sales volume, which is not what I would consider normal, but it's nowhere near the catastrophe that was being predicted that we're going to see, you know, 25, 30% reduction in activity. We're looking at nine to 10%, which not a huge deal, but another strong November. Um, December wise, we may see, and I do expect that we see roughly the same as we saw last December. Closed sales, again, very strong activity, especially compared to 2022, despite the rate environment and the price environment. Months of inventory, we're staying pretty much around five at this point in the single family market. And price-wise, again, we've seen this reduction really starting back in April where things flattened out and then started to take a trickle downwards. Um, based on what I'm seeing next month, we should see a small increase. And obviously that could change with more activity that's coming. Um, but based on what's on the books to close this month in December, we should see this number take a small tick back up. And I expect that we stay again in that 1.5 to 1.6 range in the foreseeable future. Now, days on market wise, again, we did see a drop, a pretty decent drop for the first time in a while. I'm not going to read into that. Um, it happens from time to time, but point being, I would be more concerned if there was a spike than a drop. With a drop, it just is another data point that supports the fact that there's plenty of activity out there. No matter what you may be hearing or seeing, again, the data does not lie. And all of these statistics and metrics that I'm showing you and that I bring you on a weekly basis um, are painting the same story that we've been talking about now for the better part of a couple of years. Um, and I feel pretty comfortable at this point knowing what is likely to come barring a complete curveball. Um, so condo wise, again, months of inventory took a dip, but we're still between the four and five range, which we've been in for about a year. Very, very strong. And again, as long as we're below six and in that five range or lower, it's considered a slightly tilted seller's market. So less inventory still gives them some power. Um, now, as for the sale price, this was a very small increase and this is starting to flatline a little bit. Um, and that is likely to finally be the case in the coming months where we'll see this truly flatten out, um, where we see our normal seasonal moderation. So prices, I'm not saying are coming down. They're not. Uh, they're just not skyrocketing at the pace that they once were. There was a chart that I posted a couple uh, days ago, I think, in the private Facebook group that I have tips for buying an OCNJ. The link is down in the description of this video if you want to check it out, that showed the seasonal price gains in the nationwide market. I don't have that level of data in Ocean City to do that over the last 49 years, um, like this particular company did. Showed 49 years of per month, how much, what percentage do we see the median price change by? And they mapped that curve over the last 49 years, every average of every individual month compared to 2023, and it's the same shaped curve. So the argument they were making is we're back to normal, right? Normal seasonality has returned. And honestly, everything that I'm seeing here does support that. Another dip downwards um, in days on market here, and minor, minor, nothing to write home about. Now, the big stuff, where are we going? Um, Prediction-wise, right? Mortgage rates, it's really the main driver here. There's a lot of locked up supply. People who want to buy a different home, move closer to the beach, upgrade, downsize, whatever the term is you want to use, a lot of people want to do something who currently own here, but don't feel that it's financially viable or isn't financially viable based on the combination of price and rates. Prices we've covered at length, I don't think are really going anywhere. Um, so that leaves one lever that can get some of these sellers back in the market, adding some more inventory to the market, but simultaneously taking the same amount away. So it's not going to change the overall, uh, I'll say landscape of inventory, but mortgage rates, if they continue to come down, and I'm going to be putting out a video next week, diving deeper into that, um, what to expect and what all of this means, having a full percentage change over the course of a month. What will that do? When, at what rate are we likely to see some of this inventory freeing up and get more volume going? Again, that does not mean that prices are going to come down. That just means that there will be more selection um, at any given singular point in time. There will be new things. The volume will be churning through is a little bit higher. So We'll see what happens 2024. There's predictions that the Fed will start cutting rates in Q1, some in Q2, some in the later quarters, quarter three and four. Nobody really knows. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that as uh, you know we continue forward. And that will be a huge factor um, in whether and how much uh, demand picks up as well as if we're going to get some new inventory released here in the market. And inventory wise, again, small decrease is normal um, going from October to November. 
it happens. Um, it's not consistent. It's usually plus or minus 5% either way, either an increase or a decrease in overall inventory in that time span over the past seven years. Um, so all of this change has not resulted in much of an inventory change, right? Even though fewer homes went under contract, fewer new listings, inventory still went down. Now, price-wise, it's what most people care most about. I'm seeing, what am I seeing on the ground? There are a lot of sellers who are really, I don't want to say overplaying their hand, but I'm going to say overplaying their hand. And I understand why they're playing their hand the way they are, right? Inventory is still very low. All this really comes down to his motivation. And I think sellers, by and large, don't have the most motivation to sell. Um, certainly not to reduce the price in order to sell beyond a certain point. So despite the amount of gains that were made while these owners and sellers uh, own their properties here, there are numbers out there and the comps support a lot of these numbers, even though buyers aren't paying them and don't necessarily want to pay them now, sellers have gotten the message that if they hold the line long enough, the market is likely to catch up. And that's what a lot of folks are doing. So activity, yes, has gone down. Um, and some of these sellers, I've had clients make offers on many properties um, that were a decent chunk below asking. Again, I've been talking about this for months. This is deal season where it's time to take your shots, to poke because you just don't know. Um, and I have come across some motivated sellers, but a lot by and large are not willing to budge, um, which is unfortunate uh, for, for both sides, I think. But we'll see what happens come the spring. On that front and price-wise, again, we've got about 30 days left um, until we hit 2024 and sellers can look at the calendar and say, hey, the spring market's coming up. Demand's going to be coming back. Uh, they may even be able to point to interest rates and say mortgage rates have come down, right? They're in the sixes now with confidence. That's going to bring more people in and they're not going to be wrong. So we've got 30 days left. Um, that's not a FOMO thing. That's not a pressure tactic by any stretch, um, but this is by far time of year where my clients have gotten the best deals, bar none. So if a property does catch your eye, or if you are open to looking at something, I would encourage you to take advantage of this 30 or so day window um, before we get closer to the spring market when demand will pick back up um, and sellers' confidence levels will also likely go back up. So price-wise, again, we should see a slight increase uh, again in both categories in the single family and condo market. And now, as far as the first quarter, right? January, February, March. Seasonality-wise, we normally see, as we saw in that new listing slide, we usually see about 80 to 100 listings in each month of January, February, March. That's a big chunk, and that's a good chunk that will bring a lot more good stuff to the market, hopefully. Um, so we should expect that inventory does increase once we get to January. We're going to see a continued decrease over the month of December, but once we hit January, inventory should start picking back up again. Um, I'm going to have to put together another predictions video. Uh, I want to review what I came out with at the end of 2022 and compare it to what happened now that we've seen most of 2023 um, to help that inform my projections for 2024. But right now, as far as the coming three months are concerned, I expect prices to start to creep back up again. Very small, minimal, minimal change um, within a couple percent at most. Um, but the key here, again, property specific, there's not a lot of competition right now. In the coming three months, do I expect there to be more competition? If you have a three bedroom you're trying to sell or a four bedroom or a single? Yes, I certainly do. Should that in theory give buyers a little bit of leverage of, you know what, I have three choices, right? Whether it's A, B, or C, I don't really care. They're all pretty much the same layout. We all know what we're talking about. And I just want the one that's going to get me the best deal. So there may be a situation where you have some more choice. It could give you as a buyer a little bit, little bit more leverage. However, I think that's going to be muted by the fact that that demand will be coming back in, right? I don't want to paint the picture that you're going to have a week to twiddle your thumbs, make three offers and see which one comes back the best. I would never encourage that you do that. Um, but I do think things will shift. The temperature will shift. The speed will uh you know, become required again for some of these listings that are coming out because there will be people ready. The carrying cost will not be as high. A lot of rentals will be booked or definitely won't be booked if you don't want any rentals. So over the three months, I do see prices going back up, which is normal. Um, this time of year, I see inventory going back up, which is normal. And as far as days on market, I think we're going to stay roughly stagnant 
Um, and we may even see that start to creep down because again, as these new listings are coming over the next three months, some of them are going to get gobbled up quickly. Those are the ones that are going to show through in the statistics. The ones that don't, that are sitting out there in the market, they don't flow through the days on market statistic because they haven't sold until they sell, which is likely going to be a few months out um, from the first quarter. So if you were in the market to buy, obviously, again, the next 30 days is your best shot. Outside of that, if there's nothing out there that is going to fit the bill and that you'd be thrilled to come down to. Um, and again, if it's a second home for you, you want to be excited to come here. You don't want to pull up and go, oh God, I can't believe we did this. So if there's nothing out there, hit the snooze button, wait until Q1, keep your eyes open or I can keep my eyes open for you. Um, and if you're selling, kind of the same boat goes. This time of year is really not ideal uh, from a listing standpoint. Most buyers are looking in other directions, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you may or may not celebrate um, and waiting for the spring to come. So at this point, you're better off holding off a little bit. Um, and again, we can talk strategy if you want, but that is it. Hopefully you learned something about not only what happened in November, but what is going to be coming next week. We'll be talking more rates. Um, and beyond that, again, I do want to come out with another predictions video reviewing not only how right or wrong I was, because I honestly don't know um, offhand, I need to go back and compare notes and uh, bring you what I really think is going to happen. Data, you know, galore, well-researched stuff, not just pulling things out of you know where. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for hanging out as always. And I'll see you next time.